Hey guys, how's it going? I'm out with these beautiful bighorn sheep right now. I started quite a ways back, um, or you know, they were quite a ways away, and they, they've just approached me. They're right here on me. So it, it's been awesome. They're so comfortable with me at this point that uh, they don't even care that I'm here. Uh, over the past year or so, I've been focusing a lot more on shooting video than I have getting still images. And it's been great for me. It's been such an amazing opportunity to learn. I have no video experience whatsoever. So it's just been learn as I go. And it has been wonderful. Uh, but there's been things that have helped me along the way, I feel like, to improve my uh, the quality of my video footage. So there was something I bought about a year ago that I feel like has really helped the quality of my footage. And it's about that that I wanted to talk today and uh, share some tips as well with you guys. Some things that I've learned along the way. If you're interested in getting into videography, anything like that, especially with wildlife, uh, there's uh, something that I wanted to, to share with you guys and some tips that I've learned along the way. I'm gonna actually move off a little bit though. I don't wanna bother these guys uh, while I'm talking so much. And also, it's just gonna be so difficult for me to uh, shoot a video right now when I know I could be taking pictures of these guys instead. So uh, I'm gonna move off into these rocks back here a little bit and uh, let's discuss some tips and things that I've learned along the way while uh, dipping my toes into wildlife videography. Oh man, what a hike. Let me make sure I'm not below any icicles here. I don't want to get impaled. <laughs> so last summer I was out with a family of desert kit foxes. I was out at the den photographing the kits when suddenly they looked over and I looked and the, uh, the parents were coming in and one of the adults had caught a uh, hare. And if you've ever seen a kit fox, they're small. Kit, they're not big animals and the uh, hair that the parent had caught was pretty big and here it comes running in with this awesome catch and uh, I got my camera and it was on my gimbal tripod head at the time and I tried uh, you know panning tried tracking the fox coming in and I was so excited this awesome footage and so I went back afterwards and I watched the video and guys I cringe still just thinking about it that video was so shaky and so jumpy. I'll show you the clip here. And it was at that moment that I decided to invest in a fluid tripod head. So I've got it here with me now today. And I don't look back on that investment at all. It has been so nice to be able to just softly track, you know, movements of animals and, and whatnot. It's been a huge learning curve. I'd never used a fluid head before, but uh, you know, it's just, it's been great and I love this thing. So uh, I'm just gonna go over some things that I've learned about it today. Uh, some of the pros and the cons of, of this head and I'll leave a link to this tripod head in the description below. So if you're not familiar with what a fluid tripod head is, uh, it's essentially a tripod head with little fluid chambers in it. And what those do is it softens the movement anytime you're, uh, you know, panning or if you need to uh, tilt the camera at all, it softens all those movements. So when you're tracking a uh, moving subject, it's just very soft, fluid movements that you get and it makes it very nice if you're shooting video. Like I said before, it is a learning curve, at least it was for me in uh, using this versus the old gimbal tripod head that I uh, used to use. But uh, you, you get the hang of it pretty quickly. And you know, I've still got a lot of learning to do with it. There's still a lot of improvement that can be done, but for the most part, it's coming along quickly and it's just been great to use. So let's talk about some of the uh, pros and cons 
and uh, just different things that you need to learn about these heads. So a fluid head is often referred to as a video tripod head because they're generally used for shooting video, for videography, cinematography, stuff like that. That's not to say though that you can't use it for photography. You know, it would be a real pain for me to carry around two big tripod heads and switch them out anytime I was shooting video and wanted to shoot uh, pictures and vice versa. So this is the tripod head that I use the majority of the time now if I know I'm going to be shooting video. And you can definitely shoot pictures with it. Uh, when I was down with those bighorn sheep earlier, this is the head that I was using to get some pictures as well. So just a quick tip of what I found really helps when you're wanting to shoot pictures with this tripod head. Uh, the tilt mechanism here and the uh, panning down here, uh, you can increase or decrease the amount of drag that you want in the tilt. So right now I've got quite a bit of drag here, um, but I can decrease it and it makes it a lot easier for me to move there. And uh, the same thing with the uh, with the panning. I can I can decrease the drag or I can increase the drag. When I'm shooting video I uh, generally like to have more drag. I feel like it softens the movements a lot for me which I really like when shooting video. Uh, if I'm switching over to shooting photos I'll just decrease the drag and I, I can move it quick enough generally where I can pan with the moving subject and uh, get whatever pictures I need. So just a quick tip if you're shooting video and you want to switch over to photo really really quickly that's something that I found helps. Let's talk about balancing really quickly. If you've ever used a gimbal head, you know just how easy it is to balance your camera on there. Uh, just the way that a gimbal head is designed, it makes it incredibly easy to balance. And uh, it's almost self-balancing if you do it correctly. If you're you know, shooting something at an angle and you let your camera go, your lens will correct basically and balance itself. This fluid head took a lot more learning and uh, just trial and error of how to balance it. Uh, it's a lot trickier to balance at first until you get the hang of it. Uh, now it's not really a problem for me. So like I say, once you've done it a few times, balancing on a fluid head comes a lot more quickly and naturally. You can even mark your uh, tripod mount uh, and the camera mount here to know exactly where each lens needs to go and it, it just makes it a lot quicker when you're trying to balance on a fluid head. The next thing that I had to get used to with this tripod head versus the uh, other tripod head, my old gimbal head, was the weight. Guys, this thing is heavy. Uh, honestly, I feel like I'm trying to pick up Thor's hammer or something when I pick this thing up, except I still haven't figured out the lightning or the muscles yet, but hey, I'm getting there. Uh, but this thing is it's quite heavy compared to my old gimbal head. It's about two pounds heavier than my uh, gimbal head that I was using before. And you know, two pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're backpacking miles and miles, two pounds adds up really quickly. So it is quite a bit heavier than my other tripod head, but I'm starting to get used to it. That is one thing that you have to be prepared for if you're switching from a, uh, a gimbal head or a ball head something like that to a fluid head. They can be quite heavy and that weight adds up really quickly if you're backpacking with it. If you are looking at getting a fluid head, let me just cover a few things with you real quick. Uh, some things you'll want to consider uh, if you do or when you're looking into getting a fluid head. The first thing is the weight load. So these fluid heads, uh, they've got a, a counterbalance mechanism that uh, helps when you're balancing. The, uh, the camera on there. And these fluid heads there and the counterbalance, they're rated for certain weight loads. So this tripod head, for example, it has a 26 pound weight capacity that you're able to load it up with. So the reason I got one that has such a high weight capacity is down the road, I would really like to get some larger prime lenses and uh, maybe an external monitor, microphone setup, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff that I'll be putting on this tripod head. 
and that weight adds up really quickly. Whereas right now, you know, I've got a few pounds with my lens and my camera body here. So I don't need the 26 pounds now, but down the road, I might. So uh, when you're looking into getting a fluid head, you want to make sure that it's got a high enough weight capacity for whatever you might be loading onto it. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is making sure that your tripod is level whenever you're shooting video of a moving subject. So let me give you an extreme example here. I'm going to tilt my tripod and watch the uh, watch the camera hood as I move it. So you can see right now it's at a high point. Now that I track to the right, it lowers. So what's happening, because my tripod is not level, um, when I move the uh, camera lens on that, it's, it's actually gonna move down at an angle or it's gonna move up at an angle. So uh, when you're shooting video, of a moving subject, you're gonna end up with a very crooked video doing that. So again, you always wanna make sure that your uh, tripod and your tripod head are, are level when you start shooting video. Oh, the sun's come out now. Uh, I'm in a little warm spot here and it feels so good because it is cold out here. And that leads me to the next thing that I wanna talk about next tip, or a pointer rather. If you're looking at buying a fluid head, you gotta remember, it's a fluid head. There's fluid inside this tripod head. And what happens to fluid when it gets cold? So if you love to be out in the winter, like I do, in extreme cold temperatures, stuff like that, you wanna make sure that the fluid's not gonna freeze in there. So each fluid head is actually rated for a different temperature uh, before it'll start freezing and having problems. This one, for example, is rated to negative 30 degrees Celsius, which should cover just about any weather that I throw at it. And, uh, ooh, I've got a mule deer over here checking me out. Curious mule deer. Very cool. <laughs> She's like 50 yards away, just checking me out. Sorry easily distracted by wildlife if you haven't realized that yet. But uh, like I was saying, uh, if you're looking at buying a fluid head, just make sure it can handle whatever temperatures you're gonna be throwing at it. Uh, you'd hate to get out there and have it freeze up and start grinding and cracking on you uh, in winter weather or whatever. So that's something you just wanna look at. You know, overall, this fluid head has been amazing. I'm very glad that I made the investment to uh, buy it. I feel like it's really helped improve the quality of my video footage, specifically if I'm uh, tracking a moving subject, just how soft and smooth it is. Uh, it's been great. I've been able to use it on, you know, ducks swimming, on animals running around, bears, uh, the bighorn sheep that I was out here with, uh, you know, whatever it is, it, it just, it's helped a lot. I still have a lot of practice, a lot to learn, but uh, there has been a vast improvement and it's just been a great, great purchase. That being said, uh, I'm a huge believer of utilizing whatever gear that you have. So don't feel like you need to go out if you're just getting into video and stuff and buy some massively expensive fluid head. Uh, you know, utilize what you have and uh, really just practice with the gear that you've got, make it work, and you put the practice into it and you can get some amazing results. And uh, when it comes time that you wanna, you know, try some new gear or something, then, you know, look into making the investment and uh, see what you can do with it. If you have any questions, let me know. I try to get back to all those. Uh, again, I'll put a link to this tripod head in the description below, as well as a link that leads to uh, my gear page on my website that lists out pretty much all the gear that I use. Uh, this is trusted gear that I've used for a long time, and it's I, I really rely heavily on the gear that I use. So uh, if you have any questions about gear, whatever it is, just let me know. Uh, if you have any tips on fluid heads or tripod heads in general, anything like that, 
uh, any tips on how to get better video footage, anything like that, let me know in the comments. Again, I'm just, I'm new to video. This is a huge learning experience for me, so uh, I would love to uh, hear what you guys have to say and really just try to expand my knowledge base of uh, getting high quality video footage. We'll see you next week guys. I've gotta make my way down off this mountain. That sun's going down really fast and I do not wanna get caught on these icy slopes after dark. So I'm gonna start making my way down. Thank you so much for following along this week. I hope you've enjoyed. It had been a while since I did a uh, photography tip or gear related video so I thought I'd do one for you guys. If you have any questions whatsoever let me know in the comments or send me an email. Thanks for following along. I gotta go. Stay safe out there and uh, we'll see you next week. Whoa. Still no lightning. <laughs>